Welcome, I've done a number of videos on this FL Sun Q5 printer, and I'll put a link in the description to my other videos. In this video, I'm not getting into detail on anything, but I'm going to be attempting to print a light cover that I drew in Fusion 360. And I don't know Fusion 360 very well. So I don't know how it's going to come out, but here's the part in Cura. There. So I've sliced this out and I put it on the SD card. It says it's going to take an hour and 36 minutes, 18 grams of filament at 6.05 meters. And if you do find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description to this 3D printer and this filament. And if you use those links, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So my prints have been sticking very well to the plate. And someone mentioned it might be due to my Z height. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I've preheated the bed and now I'm doing the auto level procedure and then I'll do the adjust Z on it with everything heated up to see if that makes a difference. So once this is done, I'm going to load filament in and then I'm going to print out the cover and I'll kind of compare it to the one I copied. Okay, so I have the bed uh, leveled again. I set the Z height. I have the G code running. I have the filament in. It's all heated up and should be starting any second now. I think it's just waiting to get up to temperature. No? Not sure what it's doing right now. <laughs> it's waiting to get down to temperature. Okay, so I screwed it up. I'm going to stop this. There was a little filament hanging from the nozzle when it went down. And then I tried to remove it, stupidly, and it made it worse. So, I'm going to clean this up. This should come right off. I'll get the print ready to go again. And now I'll clean the nozzle real quick with a paper towel. There we go. Confirm. And now we can start printing. It has to heat up again. It cools down and heats up all the time. And there we go. So this should be, yep, looks like it's about the same dimension. Although I think that might be support material around the outside because this curves. So I guess we'll print it and then we'll see what it looks like when it's done. So there's a little stripe here. I'll be interested to see if it's going to fill that in. And that perimeter it did, I'm not exactly sure what that is. I didn't tell it to add that, but it's just a single line of filament around the perimeter. So this doesn't look like it's using supports and it probably doesn't need supports. So now it's filling in that little strip. I'm not sure why it's doing that. If anyone knows, leave a comment below.
Okay, the print is done. I'll have to let this cool down. Okay, this is finished, so I'll have to wait for it to cool before I can take it off. A couple of things I noticed is that it did have some infill in it, and this is a very thin part. And I turned infill off, and I compared it to having it on, and there wasn't a big difference in print time. So I don't think it used too much of the infill. And then these posts here uh, may be too long. I think I might have designed those to be too long, so I could shave those down with a Dremel, but I'd need to fix my CAD file too. So I'm going to let this cool down, we'll pop it off, and we'll compare it to the reference one that I copied. Okay, I think this is cooled down enough, and it's been doing some little cracking sound, so I think it may have started to release itself. So I've had trouble with things sticking before, but they were all pretty small, and this is larger, so there would be a bigger differential um, between the expansion of the plate and the part I printed. So I'm going to try and pull this off now. Yeah, and that came off very easily. So I don't know if that's because I adjusted the uh, Z-height or because uh, it's a larger part. Now I do have supports on here. They don't look great. And then also some filament kind of was stringy right here. Let's see if I can get these supports off. Yeah, they're coming off pretty easily. I shouldn't say that before they're off though, right? So I don't know how well the print quality is going to come out on this. You know, it looks pretty good except for these little areas here. See how stiff it is. It's got a little bit of flexibility to it. So I do want to say I wouldn't expect this to be super high quality, like better than what you could buy at the store. It was a good thing to draw and, you know, I could modify this to make it look different, um, you know, more decorative. But I thought it'd be a good thing to just practice with the CAD. So here is the one I modeled it after. Let's see how close it is. It feels very close there. Let's get it back to back. Now this one is slightly taller, but the holes do line up. That's gonna be real hard. Well, I guess you can kind of see there on the camera. Okay, so I have my calipers here. I'll measure these. So the internal width here is one and five sixteenths. It's one and five sixteenths. Here we're at two and five eighths and two and five eighths. Outside dimension is two and fifty nine sixty fourths and two and fifty nine sixty fourths. This is four and forty three sixty fourths. This is four and three quarters. So this one was longer, but I actually did that on purpose because this was really close to four and three quarters. And I just felt it was easier to type in four and three quarters than to, to get nitpicky with it. So, well, let's do the height too, if I can get the height. I'll do a corner here. Quarter inch. So that's pretty spot on with uh, my measurements. I guess I did some other, I don't remember the exact measurements. I'll do a depth here. Oops, 530 seconds. I think that's correct. I was doing a depth here. So measurement wise, that worked out pretty good. So there's an issue here with the screws. So this has kind of a slot in it and this just has a hole. And I did do a little countersink here. It doesn't look great, but I don't know that these screws are gonna even fit. So I'll get a screwdriver and see if they will fit. So I made these holes an eighth of an inch. I'm going to start this off camera because I'm going to do it down on the bench. Okay, I have that threaded in there. This should more or less, now these are captive. These will hold the screw in, but they're oblong so it only grabs them on the side. You really don't want it to thread into this. I could actually drill this hole slightly bigger and that would be the proper way to do it. And ultimately I should have designed my CAD model that way. So the screw is just sticking out just a bit. So this one's inset a little bit. It's kind of hard to see, but it's not flush with this edge and really it would kind of give you a springiness to this so it sits really flush against the wall. My standoffs are even with the bottom, which is not the best way. I should have done it a little different. 
If I made this and didn't learn anything though, then it would have been kind of pointless. My whole point was to learn, so. Okay, so I'm going to go see if this fits on a switch and we'll take a look at it there. Okay, I removed the switch plate from here and I put this one on. And you can see it kind of teeters here and it's because those posts are too long. And I don't know what I was doing when I measured this. This is a white one, it's the same as the gray one I was using. But this is a little bit thicker. It's kind of hard to see. So, you know, I could probably change a couple dimensions there. I'm happy that the outside and the inside are just perfect. And I even have the fillets there, the little curves. And these are filleted, and the top's filleted, and the inside is. That would give it strength. And, uh, yeah. So on my first try, I actually got really close. And I could modify this to make it work by filing those down and then getting some longer screws even to make it fit. But I don't need to display this. I just was doing it for practice and to learn. And then surface finish, I'm not sure exactly. I could probably make some adjustments on there. And of course I could always paint this. So if this was a design, like you made, you made a big apple or something, you could paint it red. So, but uh, I say that's not a fail. It's, um, I got close and this was a learning experience for me and I learned some stuff, so that's good. So I'm not going to put out the file I used to make this, and I'm not going to be doing a tutorial on how I designed this. I don't have enough experience yet to do that, but maybe I will soon, who knows. I would love to share how I did this because there were just a lot of little tiny challenges to overcome. I'm sure someone that knows Fusion 360 really well, it wouldn't have been an issue for them, but you know, figuring out which things to click on and how to reference things, uh, you know, there are lots of challenges to doing this. So I think this was a good first project to do. I'll probably keep this because it was my first thing I designed and I'll probably build off of this. I would like to make like a decorative faceplate. So this was uh, pretty cool. I don't know if there would be a faster way to print this too. Uh, you know, I could have printed this super fast and then fit it and then, you know, made adjustments and then print the final one. That's another option. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.